a good morning to all. It's been quite a while. I know that uh, last Sunday there was no recording due to uh, power problems that we had all week. We had all week without any internet, without any power, without any phones. It was like on the <laughs> we were stranded on an island. And uh, so I rejoice uh, this morning that I can be able to be with you. And uh, I greet you in the lovely name of Jesus. This morning, I would like to share a scripture with you, which has been uh, speaking to me from, for, for many, many, many years, actually. If you've got your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to the book of Mark, chapter 10. We're going to pick up on something that we know the story so well, and, and sometimes we just uh, kind of miss a few things out on it. If you've got your Bibles there, just open to the book of Mark, chapter 10. We're going to read from verse 17. It says here, As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And here we see Jesus focusing the man's thought about, you know, our lives is about giving God praise. No one else. It's about giving God praise. Not man. Remember, Jesus was called the Son of Man. So he was telling this man, you know, don't depend upon men. Don't depend upon anyone. Your life is about God. He says, no one is good but God alone. He says, you know the commands, the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. Jesus looking at him, look at this, I want you to pick this up. He says, Jesus looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Now focus on this. Go and sell what you own and give it give the money to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went over grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples were perplexed. Now, understand, uh, uh, let me read it in the King James. He says, How hard it is for those who have, who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. In other words, there's the kingdom of, of darkness and the kingdom of light called the kingdom of God. This whole thing is about priorities. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said unto them again. In other words, they were perplexed. In other words, they were thinking about his statement. He says, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. You see, he, he, he makes sure of it. It's the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who, then who can be saved? So now we understand by the question that he talks about the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. When, look at this, he says here, they were greatly astounded. Now many people have the idea that Jesus and his disciples were going through life poor without any money and destitute and begging for food and they were as poor as, poor as mouse uh, but yeah if that was the case then when he said it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God they should have shouted a big amen yes because we are poor and we are enter the kingdom of God but the Bible says here, they were greatly astounded. 
That means they weren't that poor. I mean, Peter had a fishing, fishing industry. His father and his brother were working for him. So he wasn't a poor man. And they were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? They, they even, I think they were thinking about themselves, can we be saved? I mean, and by the way, if, if they were so poor as disciples, walking with Jesus, why would they ever need a treasure? Anyway, he says here, this is the verse that actually I want to speak on this morning. Uh, verse 26 says, They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals or for men, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. So here we have the issue of many people thinking that wealth is what's going to keep you out of heaven or keep you out of the kingdom of God. But we, we, I think we miss on, you know, actually the, the, the people that are against prosperity message uh, kind of stop at the word wealth and say, yes, praise God, that's, that's why God doesn't want us to be wealthy. That, no, no. And the wealthy people say, well, this is not what's happening. But I want, I want this morning to us to understand the gist of the of the scriptures that we have read this morning. Jesus is pointing out something. He's pointing out priorities. Now we know that the Bible says that he already loved the man. He, in other words, the rich man that came to him, he loved him. He loved him. He didn't hate him because he had many riches. He loved him. The Bible says, so God, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave it to the poor people and to the rich people. Because nothing impresses God but the attitude of the heart. So yeah, yeah, we are you we need to understand what is this. This is a statement about priorities. Whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whether you are middle class, priorities are important. To enter the kingdom of God. And this morning I want to ask you a question. Even doesn't matter what your status is. You can live in a shack. Or you can live in a mansion. The priorities is what's going to get you into the kingdom of God. Not your possession. Not your lack of it. Because when, when the Bible says it's appointed for man to die once. So when we die, when we pass out. When we pass and go on to glory, we take nothing with us. Nothing. We take nothing with us. Only souls. And that's why the mission of the church is to save souls and make disciples. But yet we have, you know, we always remember that God has made sure that everything that is written in, inside, the, inside the Bible is for our instructions. It's for us to follow for us, as examples to us. And it's, it says here, you know, you lack one thing. And he, and he straightway pointed out what he lacked. He says, take your money and give it to the poor. Now we could stop there and say, yes, well, this is what must do. All the rich people must give the money to the poor. But this, we, we're messing this out. As a matter of fact, Jesus kind of explained his statement when we read the chapter chapter 10 from 17 downwards. Let's, let's have a look at this. For, the, for those who think, you know, yes, give all your money to the poor. Let me tell you something. If you can't work with money, if you can't work with, with money, doesn't matter whether you've got, you, you got a million dollars in your, in your bank account. If you can't work with money, that million dollars will last as long as you spend it. If you can't let your money work for you, this, there, are two, there are two options with money. Your money works for you, or you work for your money. It's your choice. Jesus is teaching us in the scriptures that money is my slave. But most of us live that we are slave to money. 
Because we live according to what we to we live according to what we have. When the Bible says we must we must live, what we have must live according to, according to what we are. I want you to think about it. You might speak about it some other time. But tonight, this morning, look at this. Now look at the, the, the amazing questions of the disciples saying, but who can be saved? That doesn't come from a mouth of somebody who is poor. They were greatly astounded. He says, yeah, for God, all things are possible. What is possible for God? Look at this. Let's carry on. Peter began saying to him, look, look at this. Look at this. Now, Peter is telling Jesus, we've got our priorities right. Because he says, yeah, Peter began saying, began to say, he was going to say much more. Look at this. Look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus stopped him right there. See, because when, when you began to say something, I mean, you've got a lot to say. And when Jesus says, but look, we've left, we've left everything. Is that, is that the same thing? He, he responds to the, 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 the statement that Jesus made to the rich man. He says, give everything. Leave everything behind. And, and Peter says, he heard what he, Jesus was saying to, to the, the rich man. And he, and he said, but hey, we will let everything. Where does that lead us? Look what Jesus says. Truly, I, say, I tell you, there is no one who has left houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, father, or children, or field, and was produced for my sake. And for the sake of the good news. Now again, it's priorities. Don't give your money because somebody told you. Give your money as the Spirit of God tells you who to give your money, where to give your money, how to give your money. It's about priorities. He says, yeah, uh, for the sake of the good news, I the gospel. Who will not receive a hundredfold now? In this age, house, everything that you've given, he, he repeats it. House, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, filled with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. In other words, not only do you, are you going to receive, because God is no man's debtor, whatever you're going to give up for the kingdom's sake, for the good news' sake, whatever you're going to give up according to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, God will repay you back a hundredfold. This is what he says, in this age and in the age to come. In other words, whatever you give up for the kingdom's sake. Now, when I say give up, he, never, he, doesn't, he doesn't speak about give. He says, give to the kingdom's sake, for the kingdom's sake. Not giving up, to give. In other words, you sow your seed. You sow your seed. Whatever the Lord prompts you to do whatever the Holy Spirit prompts you, not what any man tells you. Paul says in the book of Corinthians, don't let anybody force you to give your money away. Because those who force you to give money away, force you to do that so that they can gain from that. But if the Spirit of God tells you to give your money to wherever God gives you, tells you to give your money away, then reward is on its way. Recompense is on its way. God will pay back because God is no man's debtor. So he says, yeah, in this age and in the age to come. You see, we need to understand God's priority. The Bible says it is God who gives us the power to get wealth. Now, he doesn't give us wealth so we can brag about it. He gives us wealth so that we can start giving and giving and helping, promoting the kingdom, doing this, promoting I mean, if you're not an evangelist, you should be supporting one. If you're not in a church, you should be joining one so that you can be part of the movement of God to save souls and extend the kingdom of God. This is, this is all the things about giving for the kingdom, to extend, to expand the kingdom of God. This is a mission of the church, the ecclesia, the living organism that is the church, the body of Christ. Our mission is not in confined in a building. Yes, praise God, we have buildings, we rejoice, we sing and everything. But our mission is out there in the streets. 
Are they in the township? Are they in the cities? Are they in the countries? Are they in the land? This is where, where the ecclesia, the living church, should go out there. And if God gives you enough, let me, let me say this way. If your heart is right, and you develop that fire for the extension of the kingdom and the saving of souls, then well, God will give you what you need to do what you've been called for. You don't have to ask God for riches. All you have to do is get your priorities right and follow and follow the gospel. This is what's about. And we need to understand we need to understand this. We need to understand and get priorities straight. So we have Jesus pointing out priorities. This is it. It's not against wealth. It's not against riches. It's not against possession. It's what you do with what you have. It's what you do with what God gives you. And God will give you according to the measure that is inside of you for the, 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 the fire for, to save souls. Many of us are confined to a box. We, we, we see our lives in a box. We are confined with that. And sometimes we forget, you know, God is not limited. God is not confined with anything. God is not confined with small ideas. God is not confined to a little vision. No, God is ageless. God is unlimited. And this is what we have to understand about this book of Mark when he, when he confronts the rich man. You see, when the rich man, when he heard what he had to do, when, when he heard about the priorities that Jesus was trying to tell him, and he walked away, he says he was very, very uh, uh, grieved. He was very grieved. He was, he was sad because he had many possessions. In, in other words, right then, because he walked away, it tells us where he stood. And many people right now are in that stage where, yes, I go to church, yes, I pray, yes, I this, but I'm not going to give anything away. And this is exactly what you're missing in your life right now. Not, I'm not saying God's going to tell you, empty your bank account. No, God is wanting you to have God as a focus point on every level in your life including your finances, including your, your, your workplace, including, including your ministry. Ministry is as strong as your relationship with God. And yes, Jesus is, is, is pinpointing your relationship with God. And the man, the man walked away. He walked away. He was, he was sad because he had many possessions. That already gives us a sign. Yes, he was, he, was a, he was a good man. He followed God's command. But it's about priorities. It's about pro obeying God's command and have priorities. My concern in my life is to give God praise. Is to serve God with everything I've got. You see, this man, is about, Jesus said, you showed one thing. You showed one thing. What did he show that place he had not given to God. In other words, there was one area he has not yielded or surrendered to the kingdom. In other words, he was, he was, he was his own boss over that finances. And when Jesus says, you know what? You must give God command over your finances. And that's the issue with many people. There are some areas in your life where you don't want to surrender to God. It, it might not be finance in your life. It might be something else. God is asking you, surrender that to me. God is not taking it away. He wants to be boss over it. He wants to rule over it. He wants to let you understand that God is God on every level of your life. We, we need to seek, we need to seek and, and examine ourselves. Is every area of my life surrendered unto the Lord? It's not about what you have or what you don't have. It's about priorities. 
are there some areas in your life which are not surrendered to God? This, look at this. I mean, understand what's happening here. The man walked away. He walked away. Now, Jesus did not chase him away. You see, if, if he would have stuck there and said, hang on, what's in it for me? Then Jesus would have told him, 100% fold return in this life, in the one to come. You see, Jesus is ex was explaining himself. The man did not give him a chance to, ex to let Jesus explain himself. Whatever you, the Bible says, whatever you sow, you shall reap. That's what the Bible says in the book of Galatians. It says, whatever you sow, you shall reap. So there's nothing, understand me this morning, there's nothing you're going to, to give to God that you shall not be reap from it. Nothing. Because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God said his word and it shall not return to him void. So whatever, whatever God is prompting you, if it's a finance problem, that you have, you have, you have a problem uh, with finances to uh, relinquish it before God, to let before say, Father, yes, my finances, I want you to, rule, to be Lord over my finances. Maybe all of your areas in your life are, are aimed at God. Praise God for that. But don't be found like this man says, but you need one thing. And I believe that many of us, many of us, myself included, there's that one thing that might not be surrendered unto the Lord. Maybe, maybe that's just one thing. And, and, and think about it. Is there one thing in your life that is not surrendered unto the Lord? You, God, is, God is asking you this morning. Priorities is my concern. For you have a look at your priorities and then come back to me don't don't walk away the man walked away he said he walked away because he was very sad because he had many possession when Jesus confronted him he says you know what I understand and you really loved him so he didn't hate the guy he, he loved him and he uh, and he, he he told he told the man, you know, well, I know you do all these things, you follow all the commandments. I says, but you left one thing. In other words, there's one area of your life you have not surrendered. I want to God. Let's examine our lives before the Lord this morning. Let's examine our lives and see: is this something? Then we get, then let's get to it. Ask the Lord, Lord, if I'm going to give this up, what's in it for me? Thank you for joining me this morning. God bless you, God keep you. May God let His light shine upon you. May this week to come be a glorious week, a week of revelation. And remember, God loves you. In Jesus' name. Shalom.